Hi, I'm Dr. Catherine Smith from Private Practice Ninja and today I want to talk with you about how do you know if your marketing is actually working? How effective are you at marketing your private practice? How do you actually know if it's working well or an utter waste of your time? Now, when I talk about marketing, many clinicians' thoughts run to, hmm, adverts, paid advertising. But the concept of marketing is so much more broad than that. And actually, if you're starting out in private practice, or even if you're several years in, I would never advocate that you go and put some money, i.e. spend and ad spend behind your marketing until you know what's working organically. So how do you know? Well, let's have a little think about it, shall we? The first thing I want you to go and have a measure of, or at least score yourself about, is how effective you are at reaching out to referrers and forming and nurturing relationships with them. Now, COVID has been the perfect excuse, hasn't it, for not meeting up with peers. But now that we're all online, that excuse needs to end. And the problem is, is that we get set in our ways and patients drift in. And sometimes we kind of lose track of who it is that is in our referral network. Now, I'm not talking about necessarily connecting up with GPs. In fact, that's really rather old hat. So unless you're somebody who specifically works with private GPs, you're probably wasting your time doing the rounds more than once with the local GPs. Why? Because two reasons. First of all, they tend to be the rubber stampers of patient choices. So the patient makes up their mind about who they want to go and see, and then the GP signs it off. But also sometimes, let's be honest, NHS GPs can get in the way of a referral process. Why? Because you probably heard this one before. They say, don't you want to try the NHS first? Instead, I want you to reach out to clinicians who either have an obvious referral relationship with you, for example, you're an orthopedic surgeon, they're an osteopath, or somebody who has parallel interests. If you're a dermatologist, when was the last time you went and had a natter with a rheumatologist? If you're somebody who works in gynae pain, are you looking for pain physios? Or maybe you're an endocrinologist and you should be spending time with sports physicians and neurologists. Why? Because we have patients who are looking for a problem to be solved. The brilliant thing about this is it's a win-win for everybody. You're getting referral relationships built up with somebody who's not in direct competition with you. The patient gets to benefit from your joint expertise. In other words, they came to see me and I'm sending them to him. And also, you're likely to get traffic coming the other way. I can't tell you the number of times I've had referrals from a dermatologist who I've never met because they are at the other end of the country, but he sends me patients because we've set up a referral relationship based around swimmers who had skin problems. So go into your practice management system and have a look at the patients you've been seeing. Who referred them? When was the last time you reached out to them? Are you doing it enough? You're probably going to find a few surprises here. Often, we tend to get a little bit into a kind of tunnel vision we might only have two or three key referrers and that's bad news if they wander off so go have a look who's referred to you in the past reinvigorate those relationships invite them for a beer on zoom and go one step further and get really nerdy with this actually make a little spreadsheet so you know who's referring to you and that you're making enough time to look after them i think we should be probably contacting and having a good chat with people at least two to three times a year so if it's been more than six months Go and check them out, send them an email and do them a favour. Share their posts on social media, comment usefully and make yourself useful to them so that they remember you next time they have a patient with a problem X. Next, I want you to have a think about what are you doing to connect with potential patients? This is where people get it wrong a lot of the time. So patients come to us in a number of ways, don't they? They were sent to us by word of mouth. They were referred by a clinician. They were referred by a GP who rubber stamped their wish to come to see you. They found you online and they found you via social media or they found you because of an event or they've previously been a patient of yours. Now, you may have tried this. You may have asked patients, how did you find me? And they come out with this phrase, I found you on Google. Okay, (laughs) but that's useless for several reasons. Did they find you on Google because they looked up your contact details on Google? Or did they find you on Google because they read that killer blog post about post-COVID deafness? Or were they searching for the best bunion surgeon in Brighton? 
So unless you specifically ask them what it is that they put into Google, you're not going to know. Patients sometimes also don't recall that either. But ask them, ask every single patient who's new to you how they found you and put it in a spreadsheet. Now you might think this is a waste of your time, but I can guarantee if you spend 20 seconds doing this for each new patient, it will give you great insight into how they are finding you. The next thing I want you to do is brace yourself. I want you to embrace tech. Now, many clinicians tell me I'm not techy. Honestly, if you know your way around the human body, you can embrace a bit of tech. Most of us have got a smartphone. And if you can program a microwave to defrost something, you've got what it takes, trust me. In an ideal world, you're going to have a website that helps you to market your private practice. In fact, it's going to be a key part of that. But also, you're going to have Google Analytics installed on there. Now, you might be thinking, oh, no, the big GA. Well, this is something that we teach people how to actively use in a sensible way, an easy way as a clinician in the private practice Ninja Academy. But if the big Google Analytics seems a big bridge too far for you, then there are some simple tools that you can find for free online that will help shine a light on what patients are actually hunting for when they're looking for things on Google. So there's a couple of tools I want to suggest to you that are free. One is called Uber Suggest. It's made by Neil Patel and it was free, then it wasn't free, but it is free again now. And he'll show you what you're kind of ranking for. And another free tool to some extent, you have several sessions per month, but plenty for you, is made by a company called Moz, M-O-Z. So if you go to moz.com forward slash explorer, you'll be given a certain number of kind of searches that you can do and it will tell you the keywords that your website is ranking for. And trust me, you will be surprised when you go and have a look because if you're somebody who's in the foot and ankle world and you want to really be rated for bunions and you're not even ranking for the word bunion and instead you're ranking for plantar plate injury, you're not gonna get very far in attracting people who have a bunion problem. So these are free tools that will give you some insight and will help you to some extent in forming great content that's gonna attract patients. I want you to think, how well am I doing on social media? Social media should be the icing on the cake. It's part of your marketing strategy, but it's certainly not all of it. But you know what? People tend to start that way because it's free and it seems easy. But you can waste a lot of time on social, let's face it. So how do you know it's actually effective? The first thing I want you to do is think about where your patients are showing up. So are they yummy mummies? Are they going to be in Facebook groups? Are they people who are on LinkedIn because they're city types? The next thing I want you to do is have a look at your followers. Is this a list of people who are actively referring to you or is it basically a massive hall of fame for your peers? Let's face it, they're going to be in competition with you. So you don't want to be posting on LinkedIn as a surgeon attracting more surgeons. Am I right? And finally, it's really important that the audience that you have is an engaged audience who are then finding their way to your website where they can read more stuff or even book in with you. So there's no point in having 21,000 followers on Instagram if actually they're just interested in baking cakes. So have an honest look at your social media. Think about how often you're posting there. There's no point just showing up in drips and drabs. You need to show up consistently to make it worth your while and make sure that it's leading to something else, i.e. booking an appointment with you or coming to your website. So if you want to learn how to effectively grow your private practice, learn those marketing skills, be amongst like-minded clinicians, why not join the Private Practice Ninja Academy? We're open.